And welcome back to Los Angeles. Drew Goodman, Vitas Carolinas, and Barry McKay. Edward to take on Sampras in one semifinal. And a little bit later on this evening, join us again. Gary Muller will take on Michael Chang, the 89 French Open winner and the winner of the Canadian Open last week. There's Edberg's vitals. He makes his home now most of the time in London, England. And, of course, he is the 1990 Wimbledon champion. Second time he has won that Grand Slam event. He also owns two Australian Open titles. He has won three titles this year, including Wimbledon, beat Mal Washington, young American, Michigan grad, 6-2-6-4 in the first. Had a tougher time with Matsuka, big server from Tokyo, and uh, went through Jeff Tarango, two breaks in that, and uh, dispatched to the Manhattan Beach made of pretty quickly. Well, basically, he's breezed through the first couple of rounds. Uh, uh, against the Japanese player, he had a little bit of difficulty, but uh, these courts are pretty quick, so if you serve well, uh, you can give somebody a little bit of trouble. did hear the comment earlier in the week from Michael Chang that uh, they're a little bit faster than he had envisioned because they did resurface him. Stefan Edberg has a big kicking serve, and he breaks down Stefan Edberg's serve right here. Well, if you're going to talk about a weapon, Stefan Edberg possesses one of the deadliest serves in the game. And here is a great shot of that accentuated backhand grip, which produces all that spin that Stefan Edberg uses on his serve. The great knee bend, the athletic grace, and that power, the snap that he puts into that serve. All right, let's take a look at the first and second serve of Stefan Edberg. Here he tosses the ball pretty much directly over his head. Notice the pronounced knee bend. That's where he generates all of that power. And on the second serve, he's going to toss the ball slightly a little bit more behind his head. That's why he gets a little bit more spin and top spin on the serve. And it's a safer second serve. Now on the first serve, he'll flatten out his wrist so he can hit a flatter, harder serve. And on the second serve, he gets up and he comes from behind his head a little bit more, produces a little bit more spin, and it's a safer, more effective second serve. And of course he gets to net where he possesses some of the best volleys in the, the tennis world. Stefan Edberg, the second ranked player in the world and the number one seat here. Across the court, Pete Sampras. He'll turn 19 next week. Makes his home in Palos Verdes down the road. Six footer. Two titles this year. Philly in the warm up for Wimbledon. Manchester he took and then he uh, of course lost in the first round of Wimbledon to Christo Van Rensburg. This is how he has reached the semifinals. Dropped only one set. That to Brad Pierce. And he got rid of Jason Stoltenberg. 6-3 and 6-4 from Australia. This is a guy who has a big serve and a big volley. Very similar player. He's a bit of a streaky player, and he's a little bit predictable. That's why I, I feel that St Stefan Edberg's going to come on top of this match. He just puts so much pressure on you time and time again that uh, I think the inexperience of Sampras is, is going to be his downfall. It's a great day for the beach. Hopefully uh, people will stick around the house or come here before they head to the beach. Barry? What's it like downstairs? I'll tell you one thing, Drew. Two big factors today that weren't around yesterday. The wind is extremely swirling down here at the moment as we're ready to start. And secondly, the sun virtually right overhead. And so as Edberg throws that high toss-up, he's going to be looking up into a very bright sun. He may have to adjust the toss, and so will Sampras when he comes over to this end of the court. So we'll watch that closely. But uh, nice conditions, but difficult. Back to you guys. Okay, Barry. Our chair umpire, Dick Kaufman. There is Richard, and we are about set. Best out of three sets, Volvo Tennis LA on the ATP Tour. Edberg, the only player in the semifinals yet to drop a set in this tournament. Pete Sampras has been looking forward to this opportunity. They actually played doubles together at the Queens Club before Wimbledon, but have never met. Big opportunity for the young American. <laughs> so 
Stampers goes left and the backhand goes right. Love 15. Love 15. last night oh, and it obviously hurts Pete Sampras. Well that's a pretty good start for Stefan Edberg. Pete, is a pretty easy transition for most players who play well on the grass to move to the hard courts in the summer? Well, generally, if you play on uh, well on grass, you're going to play well on uh, hard courts. It, it is a different surface. Uh, the ball bounces higher on cement. But if you're a good serving volley, you'll play, bo play well on both surfaces. I'll go in the alley, 30 off. Sampras hits his first serve pretty flat. Let's take a look at it. Well, I was in Toronto last week and I watched this kid hit 52 aces. Look at that. He's got great snap. So he's got a pretty good weapon in the service department himself. And he has served 23 aces through three matches in this tournament. Sampras got there and he holds serve. After being down love 30, Pete Sampras holds one love in the first. Pete Sampras, a tough young player in that first game of any match, is always the most difficult to play. Sampras shows right here. Now watch the serve and volley technique, but more especially, watch how Sampras, after he gets in and hits this low volley right here, watch the footwork now, because he covers, he anticipates right there, stretches wide, and hits a perfect drop volley. Great anticipation by Pete Sampras. And there is Pete Sampras. 15. One of the things you talked about, Vetus, the fact that because Edward uses that kick serve, it kind of gives him that extra moment to get a little bit further in, a little bit closer to the net inside the service line. Exactly right. The ball bounces a little bit higher, and it gives you an extra step into the net. Although the disadvantage is it's, it's very tough on your back, you know, day in and day out, because you're arching it so much that it really puts a lot of strain on it. The other thing that's going to help Sampras on the return, I think, is that he's tall and he's going to move in and catch the ball up high, but his height will help him there, give him some leverage. There's that look at that extreme backhand grip. Produces so much spin. Some people consider Stefan Edberg's forehand his weaker side, but after taking a look at that shot, uh, it didn't look like a weakness to me. 40 love. Oh. Nicely 
it done. And again. He took both of those balls way out in front. That's the reason why he hit the winners there. He didn't get caught late. Notice the preparation, he's going to step in, and look, he takes the ball way out in front and just comes right over the ball. Got it again, three in a row. <laughs> Stefan Eberg serving to Sampras. It's a pretty good return. Eberg comes up with a, could have put up a little bit better volley, but then it was passed, and once again, he just took the ball early, and then it gives Edberg less time to react. And a break point opportunity yeah. early for Pete Sampras after being down 40 love. Three straight winners. And a good ball at the feet of Stefan Edberg. First break point of the match. Yeah. That's how he plays the volley, a little bit better. It's only the 17th break point against Edberg in the tournament. He's a tough guy to break because he backs up his serve so well. Only been broken three times. Back behind. Good decision by Sampras. Definitely, there was some great racket work there. He's really moving around the court exceptionally well here early on in the match. Edberg a little bit tentative with that volley, and then that's a very difficult angle. You generally you give that to your opponent. Edberg was a little bit lucky there. I mean, he hasn't been really placing his volley that well. Maybe he's just a little bit tentative here early on in the match because he basically played it right back to the middle of the court. Sampras had a chance to break him there. And if Pete Sampras is nervous, he's certainly not showing it with his play right now. No, he definitely looks very loose. He looks a lot looser than Edberg. Well, I think the other thing, too, early here in the match is that Sampras has definitely let Edberg know that uh, he's alive and well, and uh, it's not going to be a, a real easy match for Edberg today. That'll go long. First opportunity since we've got to deuce for Edberg to hold. Most of July off, spent some time on the Riviera. That'll go wide. Edberg holds one all in the first set. This is similar surface, very similar surface to uh, what is played at Flushing Meadows, the U.S. Open. Edberg been to the semis there a couple of times. The last couple of years, though, just the fourth round, and I think he is honing in on that. Again, that should be a surface, again, that he plays well on. Yeah, he does well play well. Uh, he's got a, very, a game that's really suited for cement courts. Sampras changed up on him that time, twisted one in.
supported it. This may be the longest rally we're going to see today, guys. Well, there's a shot, Barry. Wouldn't you agree that that's the one that he, if, if there's a weakness, he generally sometimes tends to flail a little bit at the forehead. Well, I think it has to do also, Vetus, with the way he takes the racket back. There's a lot going on with the face of the racket. He kind of takes it back closed, opens it up, does a lot with that face of the racket. And actually, I think we're going to see Sampras playing a lot to uh, Ed Brooks' forehand today. I think he's come out with a game plan. He's been serving quite a bit to his forehand. And I think he's going to be playing a lot of shots to the forehand side to let him know that I, I feel that you have a weakness on that side. host of uh, some of uh, Vetus Gerolitis' uh, closer friends, closer lady friends, might add. We're on the campus of UCLA, just adjacent to Pauley Pavilion, where uh, John Wooden had uh, a few fairly good basketball teams. He won eight titles at Pauley. A couple before that. Fifteen love. Swung it wide to his forehand. That's the classic Edberg serve and volley. Good angle on the serve. Pulls Sampras out wide and then had an easy volley in the open court. He's got a lot more punch, too, on that forehand volley than he did a year ago, Edberg. And he'll put it away. That's a great play by Edberg. Barry, I mean, that was a really difficult ser uh, service return, and he just handled that half volley so well. Well, he gets caught here on this return. Now watch it, because it dips low. He hits the half volley, but kind of makes it stop. And Sampras had no play but to hit high. Good hands from Edberg there. I think... I think Edberg's starting to shake his uh, first couple games blues, and he's starting to really uh, hit the uh, volley with a lot more force. Let's watch here. Uh, there once again, that big torque with the legs, and there he just really, there that time he looked, he really punched at it a lot harder than he did before, and he gets up so well for the overhead. Has he been a slow starter in the past? Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it depends really on the day. I mean, he's not really known as a you know, notorious slow starter. Too long. To all, Edberg and Sampras. Hey, Barry, are you impressed with, with how well Sampras is handling the pressure center court against, uh, against a guy he really likes a lot? Definitely, Drew. He was down that first game. I think that was the key. He was in big trouble on his own serve, pulled that first game out, and I think he's very much in this match. Guessed right, pulled off a miracle there. Low 15. Low 15. Nowadays, Barry, though, pretty much everybody's in the match with anyone. Uh, I mean, the depth of tennis is so strong. So true. There's none of those guys with the Bermuda shorts and no socks anymore, <laughs> Vetus. <laughs> Not too many gimmies left out there, huh? Not anymore. Off. How deep as far as uh, the top 50 or 60 when you were playing in your heyday as opposed to now? How deep do you think uh, in terms of numbers? Well, I really c couldn't really place the number part, but definitely the, the, the middle group is just a lot, lot stronger than it was before. You always had a chance to get past the first or second rounds a little bit easier than you are now. I mean, you've got to be ready to play a tough first match from the very first day. Tremendous pickup. See, that's where I, Ed Edberg's so effective. I mean, whenever he has an opportunity to get into the net, he's going to take advantage of it. And that's something you can learn. That's, that's instinct. He hit a great return. Um, and that's where Lindell has a little bit of a problem. You know, he doesn't have that natural ability to sense when he should come into the net, even though he's a good volume. Nicely done. And a 
couple of great points for Edberg. Both sides here are very effective. Well, Edberg's now starting to show with some of his flair. It's a good return or good preparation, and he just comes right over that. But uh, all, he set that up. He got down so low to the ball, and he just topped it over for, with a great angle. And then a miss hit on the overhead. Works a pretty nice drop shot. I'd like to say he tried to do that on purpose, the uh, reverse overhead spin, <laughs> but I don't think uh, that was meant on purpose. It's just the sun, as Barry pointed out before, it's so tough to hit overhead today. He hit it right off the very edge of the racket at the top and produced like a backspin overhead. <laughs> a shot that you won't see too often. And Pete said, yeah, I wanted to try that. Thought he'd say something like years of practice. <laughs> And the days of saying, I'm sorry, are over too, Barry, huh? That's for sure. You can raise your hand, but you're not very sorry. You know that. Yeah, that's that short short sneaks short. in and puts it away. So the first break of the match goes the way of the Swede, Stefan Edberg. <laughs> You know, all these young tennis stars nowadays. Yeah, these teenage heartthrobs. The long hair. And their loud music. And their flashy colors. I don't know what it is about them. Personally, I prefer a man with a little more experience. <laughs> I'm Bob Knoll. My official title is Head of Auto Testing for Consumer Reports Magazine. But I really work for you. And there are over 200 people who work for you at Consumer Reports. We test and report on everything from toothpaste to TVs. Right now is a good time to try Consumer Reports because you can get a free trial issue with no strings attached. Here are the details. Call now for your free trial issue of Consumer Reports, the magazine that gives you all the pros and cons of a product, including price. Call now for your free trial issue, then decide. When the bill arrives, pay it and get 11 more issues, 12 in all, including the annual buying guide issue, for just $20. Or write cancel on the bill and owe nothing. If you do subscribe, you'll also get two free gifts. The new medicine show, updated and revised, plus the 1990 buying guide issue. So put Consumer Reports to work for you. Call now. Call now for Consumer Reports. Call 1-800-634-5700. 1-800-634-5700. And we're back live. And Edberg's overhead makes it 15 to love. 15 to love. Edberg, if you're just joining us, has just broken Pete Sampras. 3-2 in the first. And Barry, if there's been one really great improvement in Edberg's game over the last five years that I've noticed, even though he's improved all his shots, is his concentration has, has improved 100%. Oh! And also, I think, Vetus, he doesn't have those streaks where he'll go through three or four games and get his dauber down, his head goes down. He used to really be streaky that way, not you know, anymore. And, he, and he'd get down himself, he'd have that you know droopy look. Exactly. Yeah, that's gone. Hard to believe now, but there was a point in time, gentlemen, where they thought that Edberg was not focused enough to be a great player. Well, he always had the, you know, well, because Barry pointed out, he used to walk around sometimes, you know, he'd play three really bad games and his head would hang. Now, if he gets broken, he gets right back to the baseline and says, come on, let's get back to work and break back. That's something Pete Sampras was addressing yesterday after his victory over Stoltenberg. He said he has concentration lapses, and somebody asked him, how do you combat that? And he said the only way is just keep playing matches, keep playing tournaments. Would you agree with that? Definitely. And uh, one thing about Pete Sampras, uh, even though I think Edberg's a sl edge in this match, he's got a favorite, he's a very talented player. 4-2, yeah. Edberg. Edberg holds it love. Well, so far, no question about it, as we look at this graphic here, it's been quality tennis. As you look at the amount of winners, 13 for Edberg, very impressive, and very few errors, a total of five. 
And so we're watching some excellent quality tennis here thus far. As advertised. Edberg glances up at the sun. Which, which is the worst side, Barry? Uh, by far over here, where Sampras is serving from, Drew, is really difficult. Because when you throw the ball up, you're looking up into that bright sun. And it's right at that spot where you like to toss the ball. I get that shadow and swing it a blur. Well, that's an example of that little bit of inexperience where sometimes he'll throw in a couple of points where he just doesn't quite concentrate hard enough. And uh, that comes down to the experience. And I think the passing shots that Edberg's been hitting, Vitas, have affected Sampras also. He's saying to himself, i got to hit a little bit better volley when I come in. Makes the air. Points, and he can serve for the first set here. Well, Pete Sampras yesterday said that uh, the only way to win against Edberg is basically right here. Got to return serve grade and play a perfect game. Pete, it's time for your perfect game right here. He started out well. Had a couple of break points against Edberg early. But of late, it has been all Edberg. Vitas talked about it a few games ago. He really looks like he's loosened up a lot more. He was kind of sluggish the first couple of games. Well, longer. I don't know if it's so much sluggish. I think, you know, he has a healthy respect for this kid Sampras, and uh, I don't blame him. Because after watching him play the last couple of weeks, he's a very dangerous player. Safely down. Sampras thought he was in the alley. Takes a look and returns beyond the baseline. Let's see if we can pick up where the ball landed. Vitas, you have uh, the best eyes of the three of us. Well, I think I'll pass on that. I'll take the fifth. 30-15. <laughs> Thirty Barry, also something about Sampras' game is I never really liked playing streaky players. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to like playing consistent guys. At least, you, you know, you knew what was coming. Uh, with Sampras, he can put together like three quick games, and before you know it, you're down three zip. Absolutely, that game when he was down 40 love, he showed that. He's dangerous. Great volley. Edberg able to stretch out and put it away. Somebody just yelled, come on, Peter. Peter's not playing that badly. It's just that it's, uh, Edberg's playing that good. A couple of set points. the wayside. Maybe they should yell that more often. <laughs> Guess that early preparation gets it way out in front. Short swing to Vitas. He just kind of used the speed of that serve that time. set point. This goes behind, we back to Deuce. Well nice played. Nice a lot play. of angle on the yeah. backhand. Played it, played it smart. You know, you see a lot of players overhitting the ball, trying to do too much with it. Makes a really great return. Look at the angle there. And here he basically could have played any shot. I mean, but just as long as you get it in the court and win the point, you know, you don't get prizes for hitting the ball 300 miles an hour. And not many players can do what Sampras is doing, and that is stand well inside the baseline on Edberg's first serve. And with his backhand, he rips it down the line, which brings us to a point. Just several years ago, Pete Sampras had a two-handed backhand. Changed to the one-hander. Hooray. I'm glad to see that. I think he's got a lot more leverage with that one-handed high shot. Stefan Eberg was also a two-handed player. He was a European junior champion with a two-handed backhand, and he switched also. Do you think it's easier to go from the one hand to the two hand or the other way? I, I don't think it's either either way. Uh, I mean, it's, it's to develop a great backhand. Uh, like you've been there before. I just think you have a little bit more versatility if you you know with one hand. I mean, even though you have a little bit more strength for topspin lobs with a two-handed backhand, I just think you. you 
gain an extra step, Barry, when, when you have a one-handed shot? No question, especially those wide ones, because two hands, your footwork's got to be perfect. And especially when you've got the racket control that these guys have. I think you can make this just as good a shot as a two-hander. And now a third set point for Edberg. Impressive. Very confident. When you talk to him, that comes across very quickly. And now a break yeah, opportunity. Edward thought he had served a fault there. He looked over at the lines person. He gets shot right into the body, but he kind of got out of the way. But I think Edberg was a little bit distracted. Uh, he felt that he had served a fault and really didn't play the ball. Edberg just seems to be able to put that little bit of extra on the break point, that little extra kick that makes it that extra tough to return. Fourth deuce. Fourth set point now for Stefan Edberg all in this game. Safely down. That's a heck of a shot. It was a great low volley by Edberg. I thought he had picked up an almost impossible shot there and um, Sampras came back with an even better shot. Here he gets the ball down low, but Edberg managed to hit a very good deep volley, and he just hit, waits uh, that extra second, that hesitation, that's the disguise. That's why uh, the shot went for a winner. Nothing else, Sampras is making Edberg work here to close out the set. That's wide, and the first set goes to Stefan Edberg, 6 2. That was a good, smart serve by Stefan Edberg. He took a little bit off and then kicked it a little bit higher. The pace uh, through uh, Sampras off a little bit. It's kind of like throwing the change up right, right before you throw in the fastball. Does that break your will a little bit, Barry McKay? Uh, getting to the point where you staved off four set points for Pete Sampras and then finally losing it? I don't think so, dude, because Sampras knows he's hitting the ball well. As long as you're nailing that ball and it feels good, even though you didn't win the big points, you got to say to yourself, hey, when it really gets tight, maybe next time I'll be there. You know, Barry, sometimes you see the score 6-2, and, uh, you know, the first thing you'd say is, you know, that probably was a, somebody really played an awful set. I thought that was one of the better sets of the tournament. No uh, both guys are hitting the ball exceptionally well. It's just Edberg's coming up with some amazing shots, and we've seen very few enforced errors. That was like a tie-break set, Vetus, even though, as you said, the score was 6-2. Oh, Excellent tennis. 
That's why sometimes those scores are deceptive. Quick opening here. First game of the second set. Love 30. That'll help. Your first okay. ace of the match. 15 30. Barry, I don't know about you, but I remember the first game of the second set, I re really used to try to bear it down. I always wanted to try to get that quick extra break and start off the second set real well. A lot of players have a letdown and tend to loosen up a little bit. Especially if you got that first one tucked away. Sloppy volley goes long and now, as you alluded to, two break points well, for Edberg. If you serve as well as Ed Bird does, and you get a break with a set and two out of three, psychologically you say to yourself, hey, I just got to hold my serve five times here, and this match is over. And for him, that, that's very possible. Ooh, why? And there's the break. One love, Edberg. Second set, he took the first 6-2. Attention all cat lovers, here it is. The Cat and Mouse Watch, what a charming way to keep perfect time. It gives you seconds just as precisely, but more playfully than other watches. And it's lavished with quality features to combine a unique style with amazing accuracy. In fact, we guarantee the accuracy of your heirloom watch with a no-nonsense 25-year refund policy. You'll thrill to loving details like the sable gray leatherette strap and the gleaming gold tone case and superb imported quartz movement. Now, on this special TV offer, you get a genuine cat and mouse watch complete with its own personal and numbered certificate of authenticity. All for the unbelievable price of just $19.99. So don't lose time. Have your credit card ready and call now for rush delivery. To order, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-767-9300. Or send check or money order for $19.99 plus $4 shipping and handling to Cat and Mouse Watch, 5555 American Way, Roanoke, Virginia. Visit your Volvo dealer, where you'll find great prices on all Volvo 240 and 740 models. So see your dealer soon. The prices never looked better. Test drive a 240 or 740 at your Volvo dealer. Why 15 love Ed Bird. Drew Goodman, Vitas Carolinas, Barry McKay, glad you're with us. Volvo Tennis LA, first of two semifinals today. Later this evening, Michael Chang will take on South African Gary Muller. And Sampras already in trouble here in the second, down a break. And perhaps he's going through one of those concentration wanes. I mean, if, if there's a weakness that Sampras has, it's not technique-wise, and I think Barry will agree with that. Uh, he just does not put on the pressure the way Stefan Eppert does. He does not let you breathe. Eppert's got it rolling right now. One of the rare times you will see Eppert miss a volley. You had mentioned this earlier in the week, uh, both Barry and Vitas had. The fact that he volleys below the net, perhaps better than anybody in the game. Well, because he's a good natural volleyer. I mean, besides Laver and Mackinac, I haven't seen anybody serve and volley as well as Stefan Ipper. Oh! He's also real flexible. You know, for a tall guy, he gets down so easily. It's a natural movement for him to be a couple inches off that court when he hits the ball. You know, a lot of people talk about Becker's uh, serving volley game, but I, Becker very rarely, I don't think he volleys anywhere near as well or low as Stefan Edberg does. I think Stefan's a much more versatile and flexible volleyer. A lot smoother, Vitas. Uh, Becker kind of labors at it a little bit, although <laughs> Becker's certainly a great low volleyer. Oh! Missed it. Yeah. And Edberg takes a two-love lead in the second. They talk about Becker. They've put on some great performances, Becker and Edberg. He sets himself up for it. 
and he picked the right spot, didn't miss it by much, but he didn't miss it. He might, be, he might be feeling a little bit of frustration because he knows he's playing well, and he's down 6-2-2 love. I mean, that is a little discouraging. Humbert nearly got that. Good crisp volleys, though, that time by Sampras. <laughs> Disappeared for a few minutes. Listen, as yes. long as he doesn't come down to my my side of the garden here, I'm all right. That's that's <laughs> your set of bushes over there. Okay, yeah. we'll make sure nobody follows you over there. Last time that gentleman shouted out, let's do it, Peter. He rang off about three straight points, so uh, let's see if it works here again. There's one. That should be his coach. He should get, get a portion of his paycheck. Just puts in a good deep serve here. Closes in very tight. Look, he's already about two feet inside the service line. That's what makes the volley so much easier when you get in that close. Okay, Sanders. And Sampras holds. Still we always station Barry in odd locations. Barry, where are you? I'm right here, uh, Drew, and I'll tell you what, I've done some courtside assignments, but you know, here they've built me a little garden, and uh, I'm very appreciative. It's wonderful. Best spot in the house. What, I love it. What are that plant on the right? It looks uh, like it's wilting a little bit. My garden's doing very well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and right now, Edberg is doing very well. Won the first set 6-2. And he's up a break two on on Pete Sampras in the second set. Ooh, reflex volley. That was pretty fine, Barry. Lots of kind you say. Thanks for hitting it right on my racket because Edberg virtually just held his racket there, although he's got tremendously quick hands. Both players with a great number of winners. Sampras, as Vitas and Barry have pointed out, playing pretty well. The problem is, Edberg playing a little bit better. He's done that a great number of times today. Well, I, I like that style of service return, Barry. He, you know, he takes the ball early, and he doesn't really have to swing at it too hard. Uh, before you, you said he takes, takes that little short swing, but that's because he takes the ball so early, a la John McEnroe. And by taking it early, Vitas, he can hit it high. It's right at the top of its bounce, so he can come down on the ball. But Everett just seems to have an answer for everything today. Fifteen. Stefan Edberg is coached by Tony Picard. And uh, Edberg travels sans the entourage, as we see Andre Agassi with a big entourage. It's just him and Tony on the road. Well, to give you equal time, Joe Brandy, who's been coaching Sampras for quite a while, has been on the tour for for many years, even when I was at Harry Hopman's camp. He's done a very good job bringing Sampras along. Forty-thirty. And 
game. 3-1 now, Edberg in the second set. Sampras needs a break to get even here in the second. So tough to do something with that serve because it's just, you don't realize how high it's coming over your shoulder. And it's almost impossible to bring it down with topspin. And if you don't really hit it just right and get it down low, it's an easy volley for Edberg. And he just changed rackets down here, guys. There is Tony Pickard, the coach of Stefan Edberg. But uh, Stefan went over, changed rackets. It did not look like he broke a string. Somehow didn't like the feel of that last volley. Sure. That's a new racket. It may not be brand new, but another oh. racket. Petis, did you like changing rackets in the middle of a match? No, I really very rarely would change rackets. I mean, once I got used to one racket, especially with the wooden ones, you know, it would kind of mull to your hand. And I just, when I felt comfortable with one, I used to just pray that I wouldn't break a string and have to switch. Second for Sampras, 25th in the tournament. We'll see another big server tonight, Gary Muller of South Africa. He leads the tournament in aces. Big lefty. You know, speaking of rackets, everybody when they watch on television see the players coming with huge bags. How many rackets do you take? Well, now with the oversized rackets. Now with, now with the oversized rackets, you know, the tendency, the strings move a lot more. Before with the smaller heads, the uh, strings were a lot closer together. So there wasn't that much friction between the strings. But now you'll notice that Berger sometimes breaks four or five rackets a match. That's because there's just so much movement between the strings and the heads are so large. Four, 40, 15. 40, 15. Sampras, born in Potomac, Maryland. There it is. But Edberg still leads. 3-2, up a set. The long hair. And their loud music. And their flashy colors. I don't know what it is about them, personally. I prefer a man with a little more experience. <laughs> the blind spot. Every driver has one. For some, it's not when they're driving, but when they're shopping for a new car. Blind to the fact they can't afford a Volvo 740. The luxury sedan that's thousands less than the Cadillac Sedan DeVille Mazda 929S and BMW 325i. So see your dealer for the Volvo 740. At just $22,105, it's hard to see buying any other car. We're at the L.A. Tennis Center, just off Sunset Boulevard, a few miles from the water, a couple of miles from Beverly Hills. 6-2 and 3-2, Edberg leads. First of two semifinals today on Prime Network. Drew Goodman, Vitas Gerolitis, Barry McKay. And Edberg has been very effective when he's gone to net, which he does frequently. Edberg has yet to be broken today and only three times in the tournament. <laughs> Stefan in search of title number four in 1990. Love
to serve. Sampras went for it, been successful a couple of times, a few times, off both the backhand and the forehand. Did you like the chance he took there, Barry? I really didn't. I thought that was a big point. I thought he should try to get the ball back and play. Love 15. Make him play a little bit. As a server, Drew, you just love easy points like that when you're in Edberg's position now. That's one of the things Joe Brandy has been trying to work with uh, Sampras is adding a little bit more touch to his game. He definitely has the power game, but I, I think he needs just a little bit more flexibility. So when, you know, the power game is not working, go back into it maybe a little bit more defensive mode and start to chip and lob a little bit. Yeah. Edberg holds 4-2, and the opportunities to get that break back are running out for Pete Sampras. Well, Barry, so far we've seen a picture-perfect match by Stefan Edberg. He has been about as firm and tight as you can get uh, against a very dangerous player. Very few errors. He'd like to play this way all the time, I'm sure. saw Sampras here take a look up at that sun from this side where I am down here it, it is difficult and my guess is that he's going to have to change the toss just slightly that could affect his whole serve one here pretty good ratio 22 winners for Edberg only six unforced errors testimony to how well he is playing a great little play. Instead of playing the backhand, he decided to run around with that forehand and he just drilled it up the line. Perfectly played. Got it. Pretty good athleticism from the 18-year-old from Palos Verdes. He needs a break to get even, however. Since the Ice Age, man has enjoyed the pleasures of Perrier. But here at the very source, Gauls gallivanted. Romans rollicked. Troubadours trilled. And Napoleon III gave it his royal seal. Times have changed, but not man's taste for Perrier, Earth's first soft drink. It's ever so tough being ranked number one and not being rank. Playing the game without getting gamey would assist me as right guard sports stick from Gillette with its maximum protection 
an aromatically airy sense. It's the essence of good gamesmanship. After all, when one is capable of home runs, why play foul? Right guard sports stick, deodorant, and antiperspirant. Anything less would be uncivilized. Wouldn't it be great if you were sent to ring facing the great Garbanzo in the wrestling match of the year? And wouldn't it be great if the sponsor was a beer? A really great beer like Keystone, the fresh cold filtered beer in a can that tastes like beer in a bottle because of Keystone's specially iron can. And wouldn't it be great if Garbanzo excused himself and you left with his manager, the lovely Darlene. Cold filtered Keystone and Keystone Light. Bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? Back in Los Angeles, Edberg won the first in a set closer than the score might indicate. 6-2, he's up a break here, 4-3. Footfall, I believe, called. That, was that the call, Barry? Absolutely. It was a footfall call. Edberg had a quick look over at the baseline's person. That's not the first time he's ever been called for a footfall. He does come awfully close with that back foot. Well, that's the point. It's it's not the front foot. He plants that pretty well, but that back foot he moves and kind of uses it a balancing point. You can see the back foot here. Watch it now. He plants the left, and then there comes the right. It didn't look like a footfall from here. I'm going to have to go chat with that lady. Be able to take a big swing and the ball's a foot out, huh? It's a, well, it's a lot easier. You got handcuffed that time. <laughs> You'd be better off doing it during the point when the ball's in than when the serve's out. You always had greater success that way, didn't you? This time he just didn't get out of the way of the serve and he just kind of poked at it. Good body serve by Edberg. Sanford's is two and two this year against top ten players. Never has met Edward. Fifteen thirty. Everett was a little annoyed with himself for missing that volley. It was shoulder high. It was just right for a put away. in the second set. It's all set up by the backhand return. There it is. Sampras has earned a break. And we're back on serve for all in the second. It's a good return, but it was an awfully short serve by Edberg. That's what gave Sampras the opportunity to really come over it. The balls. Barry, this is where it gets dangerous. You know, you've been on top of a guy. He actually could have maybe closed this set out a little bit earlier. And now you've, you've given this kid a, a second chance. And he might all of a sudden ignite. Well, I'm sure Edberg's kicking himself. Because as you said, Vitas, he had this thing pretty much under control. And then suddenly it gets tight here. Came back on Edberg's side. 30 love. And Sampras has won 10 of the last 12. Ace. Third now for Sampras. He knocked that one off at 115 miles an hour. You have a few cars that uh, can achieve that kind of speed, don't you? <laughs> yeah. 
I'd rather have a serve like that. And now Pete Sampras is coach Tony Picard a bit concerned. Edberg down 5-4. took the racket that he was playing with, tested it, had a look. Hey, what's going on? He's saying to himself, I want to try something different. And he definitely takes the racket he was using, put it aside. He now has racket number three. And now he'll go with toss number two. Sampras had won seven straight points on the top of a wave. Three straight games, 12 of the last 15. He has done that at least a half a dozen times now in this match and it's usually off the backhand side Barry well he's also starting to put them together that's the key thing here I mean he maybe hit one or two of those but in various games now he's tying them together dangerous Thirty fifteen. mentioned that Sampras has two wins against top ten players this year of course, he beat Andre Agassi on the way to winning Philadelphia. Beat Gomez, Andres Gomez, French Open champion in the finals there. Lost to Lendl and he's lost to Chang. Another solid return off the backhand side. 30 all. 30 all. Continuing now to take the ball high. See how high that ball was? And he hit down on it. That's the key to that good return. Forty thirty. That time Edberg hit a much flatter serve. Evidently he's becoming aware. Obviously he's becoming aware that uh, Sampras is starting to figure out the kick. to run around this Vetus. There he get jammed. He just didn't get out of the way fast enough. Good second serve by Edberg. Important game obviously for Sampras. Needs to hold. Uh, pick up a breaker, work himself into a oh! breaker. Sampras again at the beginning of this game just then checked the sun. Still difficult from that side. gave him a glance as if to say, hey, that's not supposed to happen. Sampras is starting to really get pumped up, and the crowd's really behind him. He's a local boy, Californian, and look at that dive. That's really a great athletic move. 30 loves. 30 loves. Wasn't she uh, shouting for Peter a couple moments ago? <laughs> Oh, 
That looked Edbergian. That was a good example of how streaky he can get. Once he catches on fire, he starts whacking balls all over the place for winners. Aces. Fourth ace on serve. This is getting interesting. Foreign substances are being introduced into your body on a daily basis. Over time, they can hurt your health. In the wrong amounts, they can increase your risk of heart disease. But you do have choices, and one is to change the way you eat. To learn how a low-fat, low-cholesterol diet can help you, contact the American Heart Association. Your life is in your hands. Sometimes you can tell by the way it looks Sometimes you can tell by the way it feels Sometimes it comes to you in broad daylight Sometimes you find it in the middle of the night But you know when you got the right one This is the right one You know when you got the right Bright sunny day and Stefan Edberg will have to look into that sun, trying to hold serve and work his way into a tiebreaker. Took the first set 6-2 over Pete Sampras. We're in L.A. Drew Goodman, Vitas Carolinas, Barry McKay. Stefan Edberg, the son of a police officer in Vostervik, Sweden, trying to land himself on top of the world. Unseat Ivan Lendl right now. Trying to move past Pete Sampras. Swings into the alley, 15 love. And Edward Drew did the exact same thing before that game. Looked up, checked the sun, because it is starting to get very difficult from this side. Punched right through that volley, got down low again, racket way out in front. That's so important when you want to hit that volley, especially off a good hard return. Get it out as far as you can in front of your body. And I'll tell you, when the guys are missing balls, they're missing them by centimeters, huh, Barry? Yeah, that was real tight. Not much. Line 40, 15. Oh, oh. But you talked about earlier, when you toss it behind your head often enough from time to time, you will hit one off the... Uh, yeah, you could shank it a little bit. He did it in the finals of the Wimbledon tournament, if you remember. He missed it, too, really badly. 40-30. That was a real short second serve. Oh, okay. Sampras tagged it. I think he kind of thought a little bit about the serve before, and he just tried to offer. There's Edberg trying to pump himself up, jumping up and down, trying to get the legs moving. He knows this is a very critical game. one yet. Well, not necessarily that it's the best shot so far, but it comes at such an important part of the match. That's, uh, you know, that shows, you know, gun under pressure. Look at it, he just takes a full swing. You know, that's to get it to deuce. Look at that. Sampras. Streaky. Is that a grin? I think so. Certainly not a grimace. Set point. Oh. Went for 
it again. You don't like that decision, do you? No, I actually, no, I think it was a good decision by uh, Edberg because he'd been serving predominantly to the backhand, and at that time he fooled Sampras with the shot to the forehand. You know, I don't. Th I think Sampras just was caught a little bit off guard. You know, I don't think there was much he could do about that. That was just smart play by Edberg. Tony Picard didn't change his expression. Ever plays those break points about as good as anybody. Uh, Connors was uh, a, another tough one. When he was down a break point, I mean, it was like Stepped beating it your up head against level. a wall. He just steps it up another level. Now. He just, it's a good low return, and then he just, just takes that racket back. The kid's so loose, he's so relaxed, doesn't seem like he's got a nervous bone in his body. How about that? Great get. Second set point now for Sampras. Great return. Ever made a good, a great anticipation by Sampras. He already was halfway there. They just put enough power to make Edberg miss it. Back to Deuce. Deuce. I think he changed the pace of that serve again. You know what I mean? And that takes a lot of guts. I mean, when the guys just hit, a, you know, about five, six winners in the game, and uh, you decide to serve the ball a little bit slower. There you talked about how tough Edberg gets when he has a break point against. Just one of seven. It's Pete Sampras. Fourth deuce. Well, I think the, the crowd. Is, well, the crowds are blind on that one. I mean, that was a good thing. Such as out. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> I'll let you go with it next time, right? That's okay. You got to keep going with what's been working for you. You know, he's been drilling the ball. You know, hitting winners. You know, you have to take an opportunity, and then occasionally you'll hit the ball long. Edberg's nine and five this year in tiebreakers. Sampras is thirteen and eight. Your thoughts, Barry McKay? Well, one thing that's going to definitely help Edberg in this tiebreak is that he just fought off two set points, and so he knows how it feels. And if it gets tight, that's obviously going to help him. I think he's definitely got the edge with the experience in this tiebreak. Although, as we've seen so far this afternoon, this kid Sampras is a streaky, brilliant type player. There's the record. Both done a pretty good job. This kid's going to get nervous. Would it come now, Vitas? I tell you, he's been, he's been loose as a goose all set long. Obviously, I mean, he's going to be a little bit tight in the tiebreaker, but... Great court coverage. Yeah, I don't think Sampras is going to fold now. He could have folded much earlier on in the second set. And yeah, I think we got our answer there. Smart play. Keeps, you know, wants to put a little bit more pressure on Edberg. I thought Edberg should have come into net a little bit earlier in that point. what Sampras does here. He has a second ball. Let's see if he keeps teeing off. Might have had it. 1-1. One, one. 
Barry, it seemed from here that he kind of mishit that second serve a little bit. He did. He took a bit of extra time. It did not sound like 100% of what Edward yeah, yeah. wanted. That's for sure. I know. That's a t that's an exceptionally tough side to serve from. Although, if he could get through and stay even on that side, then he'll be at advantage when they switch. Guys, definitely be infected. You can see it from down here. Looked like this toss really got behind him. Yeah, I don't even know if that was really so much the sun. Look at how far. That was way behind us. I mean, he had no chance to really even get a clean stroke of that one, Barry. But you have no choice because that sun is going to blind you if you look right into it. So you have to move the ball. Sampras with the mini break. See if he can take advantage. 3-1. If you're just joining us, Stefan Edberg won the first set 6-2, or it's 6-all in set number two. Semifinals. Later on tonight, Michael Chang takes on Gary Muller. We'll have that for you. Check your listings around the country for the time. Oh, that's a, that's a gutsy play at a very important part of the match to get back that mini break. Pretty good second serve, and look at that. He goes right for the line, great accuracy, and once again, that natural movement into the net that we've been talking about before that Edberg has. And we haven't seen him do that that much, chip and charge. I mean, it would have been very easy for Edberg just to lay back and... and be a little bit tentative, but he just took the offensive right away. As you said, if he can win this point on the changeover, he's even. And then we'll be serving on the better side. Yeah. But it won't happen. <laughs> Sampras really is grouped together a number of return winners. He's done them off of both sides, Barry. Well, he gets a nice high bounce there. You can see it just hit over the ball perfectly. Watch it from another angle here as Sampras quickly with the racket back there, but a great follow through. And he knew he'd hit a winner. Look at him sprint. <laughs> and now a big advantage for Pete Sampras. He can serve it out right here. 5-2. This guy's got a lot of courage. And now he's checking out the sun. Yeah, it is tough. Beyond the baseline. Very close. Barry, you're in a good position there. Very close. It's one of those kind. It was definitely long, but... Uh, I'm sure Sampras, when he let it go, said, uh-oh, I may have let, let a good ball go right by. It's a terrible sinking feeling. Four set points now. Oh! Sampras tried to end it in a flurry. There it is. We're even. Edberg drops the first set in the tournament. And Pete Sampras is even with Edberg. We'll play a third. That was a great way to get off to a big start here in this crucial first game of the third. Oh. That sail just wide. We we'll talk about fighting through pack pressure. How about Wimbledon? winning the first two sets, then dropping the next two to Becker and being down 3-1. So, you know, it's uh, Edberg's been in this position before, so it's not, uh, you know, anything new to him. Not at all foreign territory. But Sampras has, has held up pretty well himself under, under the gun here. Played a great tiebreaker. That punch is 
long. I think it started as a learning experience for Sampras on the road to the top, and uh, he's quickly moved on to graduate school. thought Edberg was going to come in on that previous shot. And he might be wary of the amount of times he's been passed. I really don't think so. Somebody like that, he, they, they don't get gun shy. Great servant volley. They're used to getting passed. I mean, they live and die by the sword, as you mentioned before. I mean, he's going to keep coming in. Uh, left court hurts him. And Edberg holds serve at 15. One love, third and decisive set from L.A. When the people at the Complete Car Cost Guide compared over 500 cars, they didn't burn any gasoline or wear out any tires. They analyzed economic performance, the cost to purchase versus the cost to own. The result? Only Volvo had four cars named the best overall value in their classes which is the kind of performance few cars can compete with. Since the Ice Age, man has enjoyed the pleasures of Perrier. Here at the very source, Gauls gallivanted. Romans rollicked. Troubadours trilled. And Napoleon III gave it his royal seal have changed, but not man's taste for Perrier, Earth's first soft drink. Hey, you look like an avid sports fan. How would you like to win $500? Do what? $500. All you have to do is answer six sports trivia questions. Like what? Well, questions on football, Come on. soccer, tennis, basketball, golf. Baseball? Yeah, baseball, too. All sports. Just answer six trivia questions. $500? What are the questions? I can't tell you. Just call 1-900-CAN-I-WIN. Championship sports trivia. 1-900-CAN-I-WIN. Just $2 per minute. We're in the third. Edberg won the first 6-2. Sampras in the tiebreaker 7-2. Edberg is held. Love 15. There are the stats match long now. And the thing uh, that really stands out, it's obviously very even. 35 winners for Sampras. He had been down in that category after the first set. They've both been serving well. Uh, the, the double faults are low. And uh, both have been very good up at the net. So, you know, we've got a very even match. And we expected that. But the total amount of winners is really impressive. This is, as we said earlier, quality tennis we're watching. Well, that could be the difference between a great player and a champion, right there. That also could be our Volvo tennis point of the match. Exactly right. I mean, that was a, a great approach out by Sampras. He scampered it. He played it nonchalantly. And look at that get. I mean, right off the court, way off court, and he comes around, and this is where he kind of just cups around the side of the ball, puts a little bit of side spin, and hits it with a lot of extreme angle. The kind of play we expect from Michael Chang kind of court coverage. Well, I'll tell you, there's a lot of guys that cover the court pretty good. Chang ain't the only one that can run around the court. 15-30. Missed it. A couple of break points now for Edberg. 15-40. Crunch time for Sampras. Here's our friend again. Called out for Sampras to pick it up. It's usually been a good omen for him. There's one break point by the wayside.
Wait, wait, wait. There's one more there. <coughs> Now both by the wayside to Deuce. Mentioned that Sampras lost in the semis last week to Chang in three sets. Great match. Lost a tiebreaker in the second and then 7-5 in the third. He beat John McEnroe in the quarterfinals. John trying to work his way back. Edberg is returning Vetus right in the shadow of uh, the light stanchion. Is that the problem at all? No, I don't think that's really going to bother him too much. Because by the time he returns the ball, he's already about a foot inside the baseline. He was aggressive. I mean, it's so easy to, you know, in the third set to just kind of lay back and, and hope that you, your opponent's going to make a mistake. But I remember Jimmy Connors telling me when I was a junior, he says, when you get to this level, don't expect the guy to miss the ball. You've got to win the point. He said that on, on, on previous occasions, and that's uh, it's a good rule to live by at well, this it, level. Well, it's definitely worked for Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty good. He won a few tournaments, too. Don't be modest. Well, I, I, I learned the lessons from these guys. Oh, that, that's a phenomenal passing shot. Have they played some wonderful points today? I mean, if you paid to come and watch this, you have already gotten twice your money's worth. Gr great lob, great lob. He picks it up. And now I just thought he played it a little bit nonchalantly, and he just went to the last second and just somehow came around the net post. I'll tell you, when Prime says we're going to bring you a good tennis match, we definitely give you a good tennis match. Promotions? Maybe you missed your calling. Nah, I don't think so. This one is far from over, though. Sampras has put a lot of pressure on Edberg's serve. He was down a break in the second set and battled back and earned a break later in that second set. No question about it. I mean, I, this match is far from over, even though Edberg is keeping the pressure on him. But that just shows a little bit of the inexperience on Sampras. He's just missing a f one or two points at a, at a critical time. I mean, he gets on that streak where he wins that second set, but Edberg's playing the same set after set. Yeah, he hasn't yeah. gone through a bad streak. And now he leads three love in the third set from Los Angeles. Don't go away. Set. 6-2 in the first, dropped the tiebreaker in the second. Barry McKay. Drew, I'm sure Edberg right now is thinking, hey, I am not going to let this kid get away now. Even though he had that lead in the second and it got away, I'm sure Edberg is thinking back to that and saying, hey, I've got to put this kid away. And uh, it's a tough task. Love Quickly, love 15. And now 14 of the last 18 points, or 14 of the 18 points in this third set. They've gone the way of Edberg.
mentioned earlier, these two players have never met. Played doubles together at Queen or Wimbledon. They got to the quarterfinals before they lost to Henri LeConte and Yvonne Lendl. Barry, he looked like he played that shot as if it was 15 all in the second game of the first set. I tell you what, that's one of the best half volleys I've ever seen Sampras hit, and he just has great talent up around that net. He's got that quality of just like, he seems he's so relaxed, and uh, you'd never think that he's in the third set of, uh, you know, against the number two player in the world. <laughs> Got a bit of a swagger to him, doesn't he? Oh, that's good to play for him better. 30 all. That's a great return. Two beautiful returns in a row. I'll tell you, the this is a huge point right here. Sampras can play himself out of the match right here. He hasn't played himself out of the out of the match. It's Edberg's that's that's put him out of the match. It's just the the it's difference has been a, a hair. Yep. This is a huge point though. Sampras needs it. And he gets it. Back to Deuce. You must get the feeling Edberg saying this guy won't go away. I think he knew that going into this match. Sampras has built himself a pretty good little reputation. Number 15 in the world. Oh, that was fouled back. It looked like one of those uh, line drives you get in baseball. That's right. Yeah. Team. And at 115 miles per hour, you better duck. Uh, Edward, uh, he's discussing with that one. He played that very short. Gave Sampras a lot of time to come in. And then just really, did, really mishit the uh, backhand. Sampras really came under that ball, though. Uh, kept it real low, as you can see. Edward, although he's not happy there, that ball stayed extremely low because of all the backspin. so high today. He just steps right into it, drives right through the ball. Who needs Thompson when you can hit a ball like that? Advantage Pete Sampras. Play by Edberg, keeping the pressure on. And if we see a couple more second serves, I think you're going to see Edberg keep on coming in. 
He'd love to get a second break in this set. You heard Rich Coffin there call through. That ball went underneath the tape. Actually broke through the net. Look at that. Pretty extreme angles. I mean, difficult shots. Nothing's down the middle. They're using, they're using the whole court playing both shots like from one corner to another and then he just lines up and just tees off and goes for a winner. their paycheck today. I mean, court coverage, fantastic by both players. That little angle there, he just barely gets to it. Sampras hits a backhand overhead smash, pushes him way back, and look at him. He comes right back in again, that volleyer's instinct. Remember that shot. Here's our break point conversions. Edberg, four of nine. And of course, we have talked about how tough that guy is when he has a break point against. Sampras able to convert just once in the match. It's a big one, though. Helped him on the second set. Yeah. He pushed it a bit long. There is the second break. Edberg now leads four love, and that is a huge, huge break. But I tell you, you've got to give full credit to Edberg. I mean, he just fought and fought and fought that game. And, uh, and Sampras didn't give it away. I mean, he came up with some spectacular shots to save points. Edberg has just been, I think, spectacular this afternoon. He hasn't made that many errors. And Sampras has been hitting the, just clocking the ball. He has 39 winners, Sampras. Up 11,000 plus the winner, 32,000 plus. And as uh, Vitas Gerolitis pointed out yesterday, that'll buy you a couple meals in Tokyo. <laughs> That's right. Well, I'll tell you, both guys deserve first prize for today's match. That's right. This has been Since special. Spectacular tennis. And again, the uh, Love Five in the third, not indicative of how well Sampras has played even in this set. shot a little bit short there you see he plays the ball back deep but here here's the short approach shot that really was tailor made for Sampras for the passing oh. shot but Edberg is just wants to put the pressure on so I mean yeah, short or long he's going to keep coming in oh. 15 off 15 off Tag. Barry, can you yeah. see? Well, also, a string broke real quickly there in uh, Sampras's racket. That's what happened. You could hear it, and you can see it from down here. He definitely uh, broke the string on that serve. He has not changed at all. That, racket, <laughs> that bag is totally zipped up, so uh, this will be his first change of rackets. Barry, I thought you were going to run out there and give him one of those Jack Kramer specials. <laughs> Kramer would love to see that happen, I'll tell you. Shot of a pretty confident tennis player. 
You, get, you can't hit him any better than he hits his shot. Watch it now as Edberg just lines this ball up. It's a good return, but here is the shot. Perfect timing, great follow through. Wasn't a bad approach either. Oh. Again, and a couple of match points now. I've seen him play a whole lot of times. This is the best that I've seen him play in a very, very long time. I mean, he has not missed a ball in two including, sets. Including the uh, mini classic at Wimbledon? Well, th that's just because Wimbledon was a big title. I mean, I think that the caliber of tennis today actually is better than what we saw at Wimbledon. It's high praise, and if you uh, familiar with the Vita Sierra Linus, you don't uh, toss around superlatives unless you believe in something. Excellent play today. Just beyond the baseline, 30-40. I remember you said, saying a little prayer as how it would sell, and you you like to end that match right then and there. I don't care if you're leading five love or five all. Sampras gets ready to match points. This guy has a lot of fight in him. That guy, Ed Berg, and also the man he's been competing against for close to two hours. 18-year-old Pete Sampras. No. Had to be a little fine with it. A little over-anxious. He had a nice opening, and he just overplayed it a little bit. When you get to the stage of the match, sometimes you want to get it over with a little bit too fast. Edward snuck in. He made the right play, but Sanford just came up with a better answer. Watch this now as a good return from Edberg, and then Sampras gets in all kinds of trouble here. It looks like he isn't. Look, he's moving backwards and somehow gets some weight into that shot down the line. Spectacular shot from Pete Sampras. Boy, he's got a load of talent. We're going to hear a lot more about Pete Sampras. Dude has pointed out he has all the shots. 15, 15 love. Edberg will try to close it out on his serve. Another thing I like about the way Edberg plays, he gets the ball and he serves it. He doesn't waste a whole lot of time in between points, especially at this stage. And he also misses it up pretty well. You know, he's always serving it to the body, out to the backhand, forehand. Never lets you really get a groove on your return. Keep in mind, we have another one to go tonight. Chang and Muller. There it is. Superb tennis displayed by both players, but the number two player in the world, a little bit better than the number 15 player of the world today. Edberg meets the first of some future meetings between Stefan and Pete Sampras. 6-1 in the third. In a tremendous match, Stefan Edberg has defeated Pete Sampras 6-2, 7-6, or rather 6-7, and 6-1. The tiebreaker was 7-2, the way of Pete Sampras in the second set. And let's go courtside to Barry McKay. That was a tremendous match, Barry. All right, Drew. Stefan, well done. Uh, what was going through your mind there after you lost that second set tiebreak? Um, well, I thought about it. I didn't bother me too much. Um, Pete was playing very well at one stage. He was returning a lot of balls, serving very well. And uh, those things happen in tennis. You know, you can lose a set here and there. But, you know, I got down to business in the third set. I got off to a great start, which was good. Stefan, everybody saw you have a big match at Wimbledon, of course. How tough is it to come back after a big victory like that at Wimbledon and play uh -huh. a tournament, uh, the first tournament? Uh, it is not easy because you've been playing on grass for a long time and it's a different 
game when you come on the hard court then uh, you're really gonna get down to basics uh, start working again and uh, you know start from scratch again and that's what I've done here I've kept my concentration and but on the other hand you're full of confidence you know you can play good tennis and uh, you know, that's the way it is at the moment. <laughs> about Pete Sampras a lot of Americans very excited about Pete what's your assessment of his game? Uh, he's, I think he's got a great great game he's, he's a very good talent and uh, you know with time uh, playing matches you know he's gonna be a top 10 player very soon I think and uh